Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and perhaps for some of you, it is also a good night. I'm Jotika Vamani, and I'm the Executive Director of the Schmidt Ocean Institute, and I warmly welcome you to our first virtual science symposium. I'm speaking from Los Angeles, where my home sits on the lands of the Chumash tribe. We have over 420 people joining us today from 26 countries around the world. And we're delighted that the audience gathered here includes scientists, artists, and graduate students who have sailed on Falcor. The crew, the ROV team, and the staff of the Schmidt Ocean Institute, many of whom were involved behind the scenes in making this happen in this virtual world. Our advisory board members are joining us, some of whom you will see as they are moderating the sessions. And many of you who are joining us as friends and supporters. We have a dynamic impact agenda as we explore beyond the cruise. But before we begin, I just want to go over some housekeeping. First of all, if you're in the audience on the feed loop platform and would like to make the video larger, please click the hide all button to hide the schedule. If you miss any sessions, no worries. The recordings will be uploaded later today in feed loop. If you're having any technical issues, please use the help widget on the bottom left of your screen where a Schmidt Ocean Institute staff members will be able to help you. For sessions where there is time for audience questions, an ask question icon will appear at the bottom of the video. And you can also upvote questions that are submitted by others. If your question isn't answered though, uh, please feel free to leave it as a comment as in the chat as some of the speakers may have an opportunity to read through and answer them there. And finally, we encourage you to share your thoughts throughout this event in chat or via social media. So please use the hashtag SOI Symposium. To kick off these two days of interesting conversations, it is now my privilege to introduce Wendy Schmidt. We all know of Wendy as a philanthropist and an advocate for our ocean. But you may not know that over the last 15 years, she has also been addressing challenges facing communities around the world, working for clean, renewable energy, healthy food systems, as well as healthy oceans, and the protection of human rights. Her philosophy is that we cannot achieve health and balance by living and acting in silos. The critical interconnections between human activity, the land we live on, and the ocean we depend on drive her and her husband Eric's philanthropic work. As ocean scientists, this is something we are familiar with. The interconnectedness of the physics of the ocean with biodiversity, the dependence of ocean health on the seafloor boundary, the air-sea boundary, as well as the intersection with the coast. Wendy is president of the Schmidt Family Foundation, which, which she and Eric co-founded in 2006. They are also both co-founders of the Schmidt Ocean Institute and Schmidt Futures. It has been really working with Wendy in my current capacity at the Schmidt Ocean Institute. And so without further delay, I would like this to hand this over to someone I greatly admire and respect. Wendy, over to you. Thank you very much, Jodica, and welcome everyone from around the world. I'm um, speaking to you today, to today from Santa Barbara, which was also the ancestral home of the Chumash tribe here in Central California. Uh, since Eric and I launched SOI more than 10 years ago, we've been on a remarkable journey. Uh, we began with a simple vision to offer state-of-the-art vessel for research and technology development available free of charge to the science community in exchange for the open sharing of data. The goal was to accelerate the pace of scientific understanding of the ocean. And I think we're doing it. Over the last decade, thanks to the dedication and support of our SOI staff and crew, the ROV team, our new advisory board, and the many scientists, artists, and students who have sailed aboard FALCOR, uh, and our partners, many of you who are joining us today, our vision has developed beyond the ship to include a community of practice that is changing the future of marine science and communications about the ocean. So we stand today at the start of this new decade with the next set of goals and ambitions to talk about. This past year, you know, has tested us in all so many ways. Just one year ago to this day, I stood in front of some of you in person at Ocean Sciences in San Diego to announce the appointment of Jodica as our first executive director. I imagine she had no idea how this job she'd taken on would test her using every skill she'd ever acquired as a scientist and as someone who used to troubleshoot throughout the duration of global X Prize challenges. 
for many of us, for me, Ocean Sciences in San Diego was the last in-person event I attended before the pandemic. And I won't forget that evening with its animated chatter and the hopeful anticipation of how this year was going to progress. So, well, let's review it. You know what they say, if you wanna make God laugh, just let her know your plans. SOA was uh, in the first month of a year of planned cruises around Australia when the pandemic hit. We had a planned schedule all the way through to 2022. We had Joda coming on board. We were on the precipice of a new decade with exciting changes ahead of us. Little did we know at that time the magnitude of the changes we would collectively have to face in 2020. It was a week after our event in San Diego that we started to hear in the U.S., about this emerging virus and two weeks later, all our lives change. So we as individuals have adopted and adapted to the new situation, so did SOI. And you know, it, it didn't hurt that SOI was established from the beginning as a virtual institute with no fixed port. And everyone was quite accustomed to the practice of remote working and collaborating across distances and time zones and international regulations and cultures. Our staff has always worked remotely from Honolulu to Seattle, to Menlo Park, California, to Washington, DC, to wherever Falcor might be. And so our year of cruises changed, new cruises were planned and executed. And at the point when scientists were no longer allowed to come on board, we held our first fully virtual expedition. So we had a surprisingly interesting year in more ways than one. In 2020, Falcor mapped more than 145,000 square kilometers of seafloor in Australia's valuable marine real estate. In 2020, we celebrated ROV Sebastian's 400th dive in four years, continuing to wonder at the sights of our underwater world from the discovery of glass coral gardens to the serendipitous sighting in April of the longest known sea creature, the Siphonophore. From finding a new reef in the Great Barrier Reef to the never before seen in the wild sighting in October of a shy ramsword squid in motion. Now, none of these discoveries would have happened if the entire SOI team onshore and offshore and the scientists we worked with had not managed to keep our overall operations going last year. Eric and I are really proud of all of those who resiliently pulled together to keep Falcor operating with single-minded determination and teamwork making sure meaningful field research continued through such a challenging year for everyone in marine operations around the world. But SOI's history is richer than last year alone. We've had more than 950 scientists working aboard Falcor since 2013. And one important aspect of our mission is to make sure we share science and discoveries with the public in compelling ways, broadcasting live dives and mission-related videos on YouTube, social media posts and ship to shore classroom communications, and our Artists to See program, Connections to Citizen Scientists. Since 2016, we've brought 36 artists along to share expedition cruises and to interpret the science for a different community. We've held 16 exhibitions for audiences who will probably never watch a science documentary. In reviewing the agenda for this symposium and thinking of our combined past accomplishments and successes and the future, I was struck by what an amazing time it is to be in oceanography. The UN Decade of Ocean Science just started and presents itself as an extraordinary opportunity for the ocean community to work across the world, to elevate our appreciation for all the ocean provides for humanity and to stimulate our efforts to explore, discover, and understand ocean systems in a collaborative way. Today, more than ever, the magnificent, irreplaceable ocean ecosystem needs our unified attention, as there are enormous threats, some visible, some invisible, and you all know what they are, from material and chemical pollution to warming, acidification, changing the chemistry of the ocean rapidly, inducing migrations of species, despoiled habitats, to the persistence of ocean noise pollution that disrupts underwater communications for many species. As we begin to discover new life in the ocean, there are an alarming number of extinctions every year. But today's ocean degradation should be understood as a symptom of global societal ignorance about ocean systems, and that's what really needs to change. 
The ocean is an integral component of our lives, and we need to begin to see the world and its economic activities through a new lens that recognizes that interdependence of living systems. And we need better knowledge so we can then better protect these things with smart policies we can agree upon as a united species defending its life support system. Interconnected living systems are incredible. Whether you're looking at a tablespoon of soil with its millions of microbes or a tree root connected by microscopic fungal transmitters to an entire forest or a coral reef hosting marine life, juvenile biodiversity and protecting shorelines. We're just beginning to understand these living systems that support human life and that have evolved over 4 billion years. As you all know, our ocean, most of which is less than three miles deep, is poorly explored. On the other hand, Mars, 120 miles away, 120 million miles away, has been mapped to a higher resolution than our own seafloor. And we've all seen in global news in the last few days, the thrilling new missions of exploration and discovery will begin as new robots reach the red planet. Technology is our eyes and ears also in these extreme environments. We know between 50 and 90% of life on earth lives in the ocean and 90% of ocean habitat lies in the deep ocean. So robots, lights and cameras help us whether that's on this planet or the next. Emerging technologies have always been an integral component of oceanography. Beyond FALCOR itself, we look to autonomous and remotely operated aerial, surface and subsurface robots, smart sensors, miniature and efficient technologies to help us to systematically explore and map the uncharted regions of the ocean, from the deep sea to sea mounts and at scales that the ocean demands. New and emerging technology will, will expand our knowledge of marine biodiversity in the open waters and extreme environments, such as hydrothermal vents, bringing our attention to the range of life in the ocean from the largest of creatures to, to the smallest microbes. But understanding and protecting our ocean is not just about exploration. We need a better grasp of some of the physical processes that govern our ocean and atmosphere to improve our climate models and allow humanity to better respond to the power of nature and to mitigate anthropogenic climate impacts. We also need to continue to communicate all the discoveries, the knowledge, the beauty, as well as the dangers of ignoring our ocean in meaningful ways through artists, storytelling, and even perhaps connecting to a young generation through virtual and augmented reality. And tying this all together is the fundamental DNA of SOI, data. We have the tools today to greatly expand our capacity for data collection and analysis, not only aboard the ship, but using robots and drones and suites of coordinated ocean technologies. As we move forward, SOI will expand the accessibility and intelligent use of the data we collect. I'm excited to announce today that we're in the final stages of hiring a data platform manager and have started developing tools in-house as well as with consultants and data scientists. With today's technology and the further development of artificial intelligence and machine learning, we're able to see our ocean with a clarity never before available for humans. For us at SOI, our work is all about collaborations and partnerships. We're currently working to partner extensively with 13 other philanthropically funded research vessels so we can expand our collective impact. We've established partnerships with Seabed 2030, with NOAA, and the UN Decade of Ocean Science. The ocean is a large place, we know this. Little is mapped, much of the deep ocean remains a mystery, so there's a great deal to do. And the coming decade offers us a chance to work together around the world. I look at what SOI has achieved in the last 10 years in collaboration with all who have sailed with us, and I realize that the discoveries including the identification of 40 new species in the past three years, it's all in its infancy. The more we look, the more we see. So as we listen and learn from these two days of topical panels, fireside chats, and artists and student showcases ahead of us, I wanna leave you with this thought. If the pandemic has reminded humanity of anything, it's that we're part of a natural and evolving ecosystem. 
A viral particle too small to see can bring the world to its knees in a matter of weeks. While the ocean covering 71% of the globe is the largest part of this ecosystem. It's the great uniter, nourisher, the source of life. We share it together and we share the mission to be sure this essential part of our planet is understood, respected, and protected. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you, Wendy. That was really, that was really inspirational and a fantastic welcome uh, address, a keynote, uh, reminding us all why we're here today and what an exciting time it is to be involved with the ocean. And although, you know, it was just a year ago when you announced uh, that I'd take on this position, I have to say it's flown by, but also it seems like the longest year, which I think many would relate to. Um, so just, but despite all the challenges that we faced and the many opportunities, I do consider myself very lucky to be here amongst such amazing colleagues and an, an incredible team, both uh, at sea and onshore. So Wendy's welcome remarks set the stage for these two days. Today, we will explore the final frontier with exciting keynotes and panels on science in extreme environments, seafloor mapping and biodiversity three foundational pieces of understanding our ocean. But understanding the ocean is not just through science. There is a human connection to the ocean, as Wendy mentioned. And we will also be meeting three artists from our amazing Artist at Sea program. So with that, I wanna thank you all for joining us for this opening session of the Science Symposium. And I think it's time to move on to the first uh, session. So please click on the next link to join us for a discussion on extreme exploration where I'll introduce Dr. Mark Merrifield, who will lead the conversation on science in extreme environments. See you in a minute.